Jesus name we pray Almighty Father this is eternal truth you are Lord over the universe Lord Jesus you are Lord over Nigeria you are Lord over America you are Lord over Europe over all the nations of the world and because you live we can face tomorrow in every nation including our country and we have a bright future because the will of our Lord Jesus shall be done in Nigeria shall be done in every nation in Africa in every nation in the world for all things are being programmed by you and they have an end every man is being programmed by you and he has an end we just worship we lift up our hands just lift up your hands and be worshiping him thank you lord we just bless you you are true <laughs> we bless god hallelujah in jesus name we pray I am exalting your name this day. May the eyes of people see the exalted Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. We can be seated. Jesus remains the Lord. For he is Lord forever. Can you shout that victorious? world jesus is lord jesus has won the election jesus is the ruler of nigeria hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. I'm speaking to you on Jesus is Lord over Nigeria and all nations of the world. Jesus is Lord over Nigeria and all nations of the world. Why do I bring Nigeria up? by mentioning the, the name of the country we are in Nigeria I'm speaking in Nigeria and you're listening to me now if I was speaking to you in another neighboring country I would mention that country and say Jesus is Lord of other country so assume any country or in, take it about your country Jesus is Lord of other country in the book of Isaiah chapter 9 the six and seven. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. The government shall be under his control, and his name shall be called Wonderful counselor the mighty god the everlasting father the prince of peace of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of david and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And let us all say, Amen. Amen. God gave us Jesus. The man Jesus, although being God himself, the second person of the Godhead, to be the ruler, physical ruler, over all the universe over all the earth 
so he is the ever winning ever winner of all elections in every nation even at this our time amen, amen. he never loses election even satan is aware of this he never loses election jesus has won i say he has won again i say he has won it again that man of calvary he has done it before oh yes amen he has won it again that man of calvary he has won it before amen forever mom he has won it again jesus of calvary he won it before and now he won again <laughs> i say jesus the son of god he won it before he won it and now again that now again now again he has won it a hallelujah amen glory raise up and shake and worship him he has won it again he has won election again he will win forever he's ever winning ever winning man ever winning lord the government shall be upon his shoulder all the time glory to our <laughs> worship glory to his name he is, he is the winner. Jesus is the winner. He has won it. <laughs> hey. Amen. Ha, our captain is Lord. It is well with us. Check your brother and your sister and say, Our Lord has won. <laughs> Amen. He has won it again. He will win forever. Ever ruling one. King of kings and lord of lords. His throne no man can take. I will not give my glory to another. Hey. Worship. Thank you Lord. I will, give, I will not give my glory to another man. Sit down there. Praise the Lord. The government shall be upon his shoulder. That is it. And the government of this country is continually upon the shoulders of Jesus. He is the one bearing rule, controlling everything, directing everything. All will move according to his will. That which he allows he will allow that which he disallowed is disallowed in the book of philippians philippians chapter 2 verse 9 to verse 11 we are for God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He is the highest person. The greatest person. The number one person in this nation. In every nation. All over the world. The number one man is Jesus. The authority is given to him. He said, all power is given unto me. The reason why he said is given, God gave me, is because he being God, came down to the earth and became man. As we are, he is subject to God, who remains God in heaven. 
subject to the father subject to the spirit which is the same god and he said as a man power has been given unto me go into all the world i have power over all of all the world and jesus has power over this nation he has power over nigeria that at the name of jesus know this thing in your heart Know this thing in your mind. Put it right in the depth of your, and let your bones carry it also. And let your blood circulate this. That at the name of Jesus, every knee from every place in this country shall bow. Every knee of every man in this country shall bow. Every knee of every religious person shall bow. That means eternal truth. Is happening practically. Hallelujah. Every knee shall bow. Of things in heaven, devil in the sky, bows over there. Things on earth, human beings upon the earth, bow to Jesus. And things underneath the earth, whatever those things are, bow to jesus hallelujah and more than just bowing every tongue shall confess that jesus christ is lord you know there is this remote control remote control deals with property some elements that are coated or built into a system that will automatically re re respond to the remote is that so so that when you praise the remote it starts re obeying whatever instruction comes from the remote because it is built like that god built mankind and put something in him that when jesus rises up he bows everything something is in man whether he knows it he doesn't know it whether he wants it he doesn't want it let jesus appear every knee shall bow hey glory to our god and every tongue shall confess that jesus is lord to the glory of god the father i want you to know this who are followers of jesus that your lord has never ever lost he is the king he is the Lord. And we who are in his party are the ones ruling. Amen. Hey, are you in Jesus' party? Yes. His party is righteousness and holiness. Truth, righteousness, and holiness. What is the party? Truth, righteousness, and holiness. God's truth righteousness and holiness bible truth righteousness and holiness eternal truth righteousness and holiness and these people are the winners just touch yourself and say i'm the winner because my lord has won simple let the people of the earth moon let the people of the nation moon but let us rejoice because we won yes in the book of hebrews hebrews chapter 3 verse 1 verse 3 to 4 we are for holy brethren partakers of the heavenly calling consider the apostle and high priest of our profession christ jesus verse 3 for this man was counted worthy of more glory than moses in as much as he who had built the house had more honor than the house for every house is builded by some man but he that builded all things is God. 
Moses, a great man. Everybody, every religion in Nigeria should acknowledge Moses. That Moses was a great leader but there was somebody on top of moses the name of that person was jesus the name of that person is jesus the name of that person shall be jesus for i am he that was and is and shall and, and is to come and in the same way in the same position as you saw moses a human being one of the the highest man everybody respected him everybody humbled to him in the same way every man in any place is subject to jesus every man why the scripture says the reason why moses is subject to jesus christ jesus is because he was the one that built moses he was the one that created moses and so moses is subject to him and so the president of every country was created by jesus and is subject to jesus all things were made by him and by him all things consist all things were made by him and for him so the president of nigeria the human president has a higher person who is jesus whoever he is there's somebody greater than him what's the name of that person jesus. shout that name jesus. shout that name jesus. whether he knows it or does not know it someone created him and he is lower than that creator and the name of the creator in in the human sense is jesus how much less do we talk about governance whichever governor all subject to jesus in every state of every nation how much less do we talk about any ruler king chief then we come and be talking about minister or chairman the government of man the government of institutions and of nations are upon the shoulder of jesus the almighty god the everlasting father the prince of peace the children of god are safe in his hands because the lord himself is their shepherd and governor the lord is my shepherd what's the next thing that follows i shall not want he make me to lie down in green pastures i shall not lack my food he leadeth me on the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Righteousness shall continue with me everywhere. In every nation. Righteousness shall blossom and multiply and be empowered in Nigeria. Our Lord is the ruler. Praise the Lord. That is it. We are safe everywhere. God is interested in the nations where his children reside and ensures their peace and well-being. Just few were in a country called Sodom and Gomorrah and the Lord was interested that no harm should happen to Sodom and Gomorrah as long as they were there. In fact, the angel said, we are waiting for you to leave because in their own case it was even a strange land and they were removing them from there to doom that land but our own case it is our land our own case what happens and we are here we are more than the number that were in sodom and therefore god is interested in nigeria god is interested in your country because you're giving him righteousness the people that call upon him are there and therefore Satan is powerless over that place. Hey. My wife told me a dream this morning. He said, the man you know about has been wondering. I have, somebody was telling her, telling her 
she saw the country very quiet very quiet and in a state of mourning because who can challenge this president nobody a man came up and said do you see the state of this country they're in sorrow nobody is able because they have all been bewitched this man has bewitched them such that nobody can talk but there is there is something he is feeling he has been told by those that empowered him told that there is someone in your country that is breaking down this your power anything you want anytime you want to build it you want to build up and perfect your arrest it gets broken it's like an unhealed ant building unhealed you build it up so they have been looking for that man they will not get him hallelujah they will not get him let me just stop here I'm telling you, there is a power that is working because we are using Jesus. We are going by the, the, the voice of the final authority. We say, Lord, intervene. Lord, intervene. And God intervenes. And those things will not work. And they will not catch that man. Can they catch Jesus? I say, can they catch Jesus? Simple simple we have the lord in this country he has his children in this country huh so let's go god is interested that's why he said my children always pray for the peace of the nations where you are the cities where you are even the cities of strange nations where you are because i'm interested in your peace when i hear your prayers i will give peace to that nation you will enjoy peace look at it in jeremiah chapter 29 verse 7 Jeremiah 29, verse 7. The Bible tells us here saying, And seek the peace of the city where with her I have caused you to be carried away captives, and pray unto the Lord for it, for in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. Because there is a prince of peace that is already the captain of that place always pray for that nation pray for your nation pray for the city and in the peace of that city you will have peace and the ruler of every place is the prince of peace jesus always talk to him for the peace of the nation always talk to him for the peace of the city although the lord is not seen ruling over the cities states provinces regions or nations of our present world due to the sinfulness of the people and their rulers nonetheless he controls all affairs of men and nations understand this because ah but the man ruling is a muslim the man ruling is an occultic man the man ruling is an atheist one who doesn't even believe that God exists. The man ruling is like this. The man ruling is like that. Forget that. The overall ruler is Jesus. The overall leader. He, that man ruling is like Moses. When he was, Moses was ruling the people. And Jesus was ahead as the one that formed Moses. So whoever is ruling, there's somebody that formed him. There's somebody that gave him the breath of life. Amen? Somebody gave him the breath of life. And that person that gave him the breath of life is Jesus. So, don't mind. Just pray and ask Jesus to take care. Talk to him. He will take care. The Prince of Peace. Yes. 
That's what we need to understand. He will direct all things according to his eternal plan and purpose. That's one thing human beings should know. And the children of God, God has, has the blueprint of all affairs, kingdoms, and nations of the world, and the period of time, even concerning an individual. When all the presidents that have ruled, that are ruling, that shall rule, their names are already written down. And the period they will rule, what will happen in the period? The divine interventions, the things God will do to ensure everything is controlled, to follow the path of his eternal plan. Everything has been designed. So no man cometh of his own. No man cometh of his own. Uh, maybe you say, you hear, hey, the president say, my government shall be tough. He has no power to make his government tough. He has no power. Those are ways that he lacks the power to fulfill. Because when Pilate told Jesus Christ, don't you know I have the power to, uh, to sentence you to death and the power to release you? He said, thou canst have no power except it is given to you from above. The president has no power of his own. Except Jesus allowed him. Except Jesus permits him don't take his word as final don't fear his words <laughs> don't fear his words they ha he has no power to execute them are you hearing me yes. are you hearing me yes. who gives him the breath that he breathes is it himself that, that gives the air he breathes the god that gave him ear to breathe when is he going to seize it does he know so what power does he have? Any president that is in his right mind will never speak words that are out of sense, out of order, <laughs> to threaten people or to do what? Because you came to the throne because Jesus allowed you. Whether you know Jesus or not, whether you believe in Jesus or not, whatever your religion said about Jesus, he is the maker, the king of kings. The Lord of Lords, your knee shall bow before him. That one is already established forever and ever. Thy word is settled in heaven. Therefore, you cannot have power to touch his people, to do anything. Your plan will never come to pass, except it is part of the divine plan that it shall happen like that. I will allow this on my people because I want to work out this on them. Except that is in it. The president sits down as a figurehead. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Never be threatened by any man. Never. Who, who is he that say it and it cometh to pass except the Lord has ordered it? So that's why you should know that you will, you will face tomorrow. Because Jesus is there, allowing and disallowing, ruling the nations according to his own eternal plan. Because he is leading the world to run it up. So be very peaceful. Sit in the vehicle and be peaceful because an expert is driving. And his name is Jesus. Who is the name of your driver? What is the name of your driver? Simple. Life is settled. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He do it according to his will in the kingdoms of men. And nobody said, what doest thou? Can there be another person that can do according to his will? And nobody will say, what doest thou? No. No, except Jesus. No man. No man. So we have this to understand. Yeah. The waters of the ocean, of the sea, have never crossed their boundary despite their roaring. When you see the wave coming, it's as if it's, ah, if this wave continues, it will break down. A command has been given by the Creator. A decree has been given by the Creator that the waters of the sea should not cross their boundary. <laughs> the waters of the sea. How much of a human being? 
he can never cross the allowable boundary that God allows. He cannot. The governor cannot. The ruler cannot. The king of nations cannot. It's not possible. Because there is unseen almighty hand ruling on the universal throne. Ah, God runs the government of men and nations according to his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And the God of heaven is higher than you. God is higher than you. It's an expert swimmer had never redeemed you from drowning in the water. Otherwise, you will not believe him. That's why it is said, when you want to deliver somebody drowning from the water, allow him to drink the water well and become completely helpless. Then, when you hold him, he will just be following. God just wants you to be following. Because the wisdom of God is so great. Many of us cry when he begins to use his wisdom. We think that it is destruction. But God said the foolishness of God is greater than the wisdom of men. Put together. But when God begins to act in his wisdom, we might go contrary and say, Hey, God, uh, you, uh, you don't know, you want us to perish? He want us to perish. He rules in his wisdom, in his knowledge and understanding. Listen, this circumstance that you're passing through, he knew it before and has already planned a way of escape. There's no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. And God is faithful. Who will not allow you to be tempted above your ability, but will always make a way of escape. A way out of this situation of Nigeria has been planned. Before today, before this year, in fact, before Nigeria was formed. Way for Jesus, ancient of days, <laughs> the King of kings and the Lord of lords. King of kings and Lord of lords. That is he. Amen. Don't fear. Everything has been planned. He is a God of foreknowledge. He just said, follow me. Just follow him. Yes. Follow him. Know also that he is a God of truth. Righteousness. Patience. Love. Judgment. He brings all these attributes to play on the government of the nations because the government are under his shoulder. He plays this. He's a God of law. He doesn't want to destroy. He's a God of patience. He knows how to give a person another opportunity. He knows. Is it not the God that allows Satan up to this time? In his perfect wisdom. He's a God of patience. So he knows. A God of truth and justice. He's also a God of judgment. To punish. It's a combination. Perfect combination. A ruler with perfect combination. And a ruler that knows what to release at every time. Trust him. Trust him. Trust him. Let us follow God and his ways of dealing with people and rulers over nations. He knows more than us and we are not capable to advise him. Are we gods? Are we at his level? Can you, sitting down here now, who does not know anything about aeroplane, advise a pilot? That's why you should understand. We cannot advise him. Who can counsel him? 
Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11. Who can counsel God? Verse 33 to 36. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? Or who hath been his counselor? Or who hath first given to him and it shall be recompensed unto him again? For of him and through him and to him are all things. To whom be glory forever and ever. Raise that hand and wave at this God of knowledge, God of wisdom, God of understanding, God of love, God of patience, God of judgment and justice. Thank you, Lord. But a brutish man does not know this. A fool does not understand God's ways. Hence, he accuses and abuses God for what God allows or disallows in his wisdom. A brutish man, a fool. Look at it in the book of Psalm 92. Psalm 92, verse 4 to verse 10. The Bible tells us here saying, For thou, Lord, hast made me glad through thy walk. I will triumph in the works of thy hands. O oh Lord, how great are thy works. And thy thoughts are very deep. The psalmist is saying, your thoughts are deep. Your ways are glorious and wonderful. His name shall be called Wonderful. And I will glory. I will prosper by you. But verse 6. Can we read verse 6 together? One, two, go. A brutish man knoweth not. Neither doth a fool understand this. Verse 7. When the wicked spring as the grass. And when all the workers of iniquity do flourish. It is that they shall be destroyed forever. A fool will not understand this. God, hey, why did you allow this person to win election? Why, well, God, we all prayed for to you. And why did you allow this one? Why did you allow this one? A fool will not understand. A brutish man will not know this. Do you know that one of the ways of judgment is promotion? Do you remember when Ahab and Jezebel wanted to destroy Naboth? They first raised him up. They said promoted and then there's destruction suddenly that came in. Do you know that the, the Bible says the prosperity of fools shall destroy him. The prosperity of fools shall destroy them. It is in prosperity that collapse comes. So let no man therefore think that I have won and I will do whatever I want. Do you know the collapse that is coming up after you? Do you know the judgment that will overtake your promotion? Deal carefully if the Lord gives you grace. Deal carefully. Your promotion will destroy you if you think that it is for you to do evil with it. So when you are promoted, be careful. In fact, check up whether you are on your way to destruction. Because when pride cometh, then cometh destruction. That you speak carelessly? As if you hold the world in your hand? As if you burn this country? But a 
fool doesn't know this and will be complaining against God. Why did you promote that man? Why did you lift him up to another rank? Why did you allow him to still be there? Why did you? Fool will not understand. A brutish man will not get this understanding. That is it. Look at it in Psalm 73. From verse 1. One of the fools that repented. Psalm 73. From verse 1. Truly God is good to Israel. Even to such are of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well near slipped. For I was envious at the foolish. When I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bands in their dead. But their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men. Neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore pride compassed them about as a chain. Violence covered them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens. And their tongue walked through the earth. Therefore, his people return hither, and waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. And they say, How doth God know? And is there knowledge in the most high? Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocency. For all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. If I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. This man said, I see that the wicked people were prospering, making progress. I see they don't even bother about God. They speak against God. They speak against every man. They want to oppress every man. They want to do what? I said, but I have been a Christian. I've been a righteous man. I'm not doing this evil, but I'm not winning as these people are winning. I'm not making progress as these people are making progress. I, and I said, oh, then my Christianity is in vain. My righteousness is in vain. My walking in the truth is in vain. That is what he thought. Yes, that is what he was thinking. Then he says, verse 17. Read verse 17, one, two, go. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I their end. When I entered into the scripture, I now know the end of those people. Don't envy the prosperity of fools. I now know their end. Ah. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places. Thou casted them down into destruction. How are they brought into desolation as in a moment? They are utterly consumed with terrors. As a dream, when one awaked, so, O oh Lord, when thou awakest, thou shalt despise their image. Can you see that? They are like dreams. Whatever he feels is a dream he's dreaming. He will wake up and not see that thing. Because he's boasting of wickedness, in my own power, my own charm, my own demon, you will wake up and not see it. You are dreaming. Your victory is a dream. It looks real, but it's a dream. It is until I entered into the word of God. I didn't know the end of these people. I said, ah, the word is true. Don't envy the prosperity of the wicked. Don't praise their own wicked intelligence. Don't praise their own armed forces. That they are able to bulldoze. They are able to break through. Hey, this man is great. Don't count him great for wickedness. He has a terrible end. Do you, he said they are consumed with terror. Do you know the type of fear that enters into the heart of the wicked? 
he doesn't have rest the wicked are like the sea that moved that casted out um, uh, that that cannot rest but throws up fire and death so there's no peace unto the wicked wickedness does not give peace victory won after because of wickedness does not last watch it not where god is interested not where the people of god are there i'm praying to him no no so don't don't clap hands and praise the intelligence of sinners it will not benefit them this man said when i entered into the sanctuary i entered into the secrets of god and read the register of god concerning them i said hey if this man knew this he would have never contested he would have never done what he did hey, hey had the prince of this world understood this they would have never crucified the lord of glory that's the word of god yes now we are going to go to consider the case of haman haman and the jews in the book of esther a case study of haman and the jews in the book of esther haman the agagite was an enemy of the jews in fact the forefathers the amalekites he was an amalekite the Amalekites were sworn enemy of the Jews. And God also swear, I will battle with the Amalekites from generation to generation until they will be wiped out. So, since Haman came across the Jewish nation through Mordecai, he said, I will wipe them out of the kingdom of Ahasuerus wipe them out of the world he was exalted in the kingdom of king ahasuerus the kingdom of patience and the medes so he now had the right position to do it he had the right position now to wipe out a people that god was interested in a people that God had decided to carry along with him to eternity. He wanted to wipe them out. Let's see the case study. He plotted to destroy Mordecai and all the Jews. Check it in Esther chapter 3. Esther chapter 3. We'll do quite some reading. Verse 8 to 15. And Haman said unto King Ahasuerus, There is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of thy kingdom. And their laws are diverse from all people. Neither keep they the king's laws. Therefore, it is not for the king's profit to suffer them. If it please the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed. And I will pay 10,000 talents of silver to the hands of those that have the charge of the business to bring it into the king's treasury. And the king took his ring from his hand and gave it unto Haman, the son of Hamedata, the Agagai, the Jews' enemies can you see can you see verse 13 and the letters were sent by post into all the king's provinces to destroy to kill and to cause to perish all jews both young and old little children and women in one day even upon the 13th day of the 12th month which is the month other and to take the spoil of them for a prey. Verse 15. The post went out, being hastened by the king's commandment, and the decree was given in Shushan the palace. And the king and Haman sat down to drink, but the city Shushan was perplexed, 
stubborn man. I'm telling you, don't bother about the hard heartedness of any man. God will humble him. God will make him Nebuchadnezzar to become an animal. Seven years. When he comes, he will say, Now I know the Messiah ruled over the kingdoms of men. I'm telling you, the Lord over the universe is Jesus. Give me that name again. Jesus. Nobody can contest with him. Nobody. Satan bows at his name. How much more of those people who are serving Satan? So, look at this man now. He had planned that all the Jews should be wiped out. And he had the authority to do it. The decree had already been take given. He said, ah, they have planned to Islamize Nigeria. Watch and see whether it will happen. Anybody that attempts that is, uh, is uh, for his own soul. Any religion that wanted to do that, any president, any ruler is for the damnation of his life. Because he is dealing with a people God has chosen. A people God is bringing to eternity. It shall not happen in this country. It shall not happen in this country. Angels will pull down houses. Angels will slay people like animals. <laughs> you know, when Jesus was behaving slowly, slowly, gentle, gentle, they thought he was a man. How we will kill him. They kill him, he rose again. <laughs> And now it's ruling and it's coming with power. Every knee shall bow. It's not a man, it's God. And God will not die. Hallelujah. Amen. So forget that. That will wipe out Christianity from this nation. It shall not happen. I say it shall not happen. He said, But I dreamed it. Cast your dream into the sea. Amen? Amen. Hey, but the people are saying it. Who has power to say and it comes to pass except God has ordained it? Will God ordain that this precious country that does his work? Will God ordain that we who are preaching the word of righteousness and holiness, exalting his name, should become Muslims tomorrow? Then there's no God. Then we are following the wind. Hmm. If God is God, forget those statements. In fact, those who say those things, for just for saying it shall be punished. Just for saying it, go punish them. Hey. Glory to our God. So, this is the plan of this man, Haman. Now, the Jews made petition to Esther and fasted three days. Look at it in chapter 4, verse 1 to 9, and verse 15 to 17. When Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud and bitter cry. And came before the king's gate, for none might enter into the king's gate, clothed with sackcloth. And in every province, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, there was great mourning among the Jews, and fasting, and weeping, and wailing, and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. So Hetak went forth to Mordecai unto the street of the city which was before the king's gate and Mordecai told him of all that had happened unto him and of the sum of money that Haman had promised to pay to the king's treasuries for the Jews to destroy them and also he gave him the copy of the writing of the decree that was given at Shushan to destroy them to show it unto Esther and to declare it unto her and to charge her that she should go in unto the king to make supplication unto him and to make requests before him for her people. Verse 15. Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan 
and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day, I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. See, what was the solution to this decree? Prayer. Everybody say prayer. prayer. Say it again. Prayer. Esther, one, Mordecai prayed to Esther. That is, made requests. When I talk about prayer, request the matter will be settled made the quest to esther esther made the quest to ahasuerus the king and then the jews went on three days fasting and prayer to make request to the almighty god that is our duty and the lord says when you are praying repent Turn away from your sins. Pray actively and God will hear. And we know there are people in this country that have turned away from sin and are praying with the whole heart. God will hear them. Yeah. Did we pray? Did this, did this nation pray? As I, much as I know, there was no time in the history of Nigeria that Christians had time to pray more than this period we prayed we did prayer we organized seven days fasting and prayer in all the states of nigeria that we have holiness revival movement all the states seven days prayers and fasting then we selected People, prayer warriors from all over the country and brought them to the international headquarters. They were here four days of prayer and fasting. Oh Lord, answer your people. Oh Lord, deliver your people. They were taught the message of righteousness and holiness so they can pray with a pure heart. Were you aware that they were here? How many of you were aware? Okay, put down your hand. You were among some of those who came here for prayer. Can you raise up your hand? Ah, bless God. Prayer. The Jews prayed. And the matter was finished. Everybody say, prayer finishes the matter. Say it again. That's it. Now, wisdom and confusion is the next thing now the manifestation of wisdom is the confusion of other people the manifestation of the wisdom of god in esther brought confusion to other jews who didn't know wisdom i say a brutish man does not understand this neither does a fool know it when god begin to use wisdom now, you see it. Esther went before the king with special request and wisdom. Want to read? Chapter 5, verse 1 to 8. Now, it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house, over against the king's house, and the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house, over against the gate of the house. And it was so, when the king saw Esther the queen standing in the court, that she obtained favor in his sight. Prayer has opened favor for Esther. And as it has begun, so it shall finish. Amen. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter, that was in his hand. So Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. Then said the king unto Esther, What will thou, Queen Esther? And what is thy request? It shall be given thee to the half of the kingdom. Now, if you were Esther, what would you have said? 
It is a man. A man, a man wants to destroy us. A man. That would have never worked. Get the wisdom of God. Like the wisdom that is moving in this country now. Understand the wisdom. Yeah. Esther did not pour in the request against Haman immediately. No. She hid that request. No, 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 no. God told Esther, it's not time. I have heard the prayer, but I am now into wisdom. I am into wisdom. It is not time to execute that. So Esther asked for this other thing. It is the way to it. What did Esther ask for? And Esther answered, If it seem good unto the king, let the king and Haman come this day unto the banquet that I have prepared for him. Then the king said, Cause Haman to make haste, that he may do as Esther had said. So the king and Haman came to the banquet that Esther had prepared. And the king said unto Esther, at the banquet of wine what is thy petition and it shall be granted thee and what is thy request even to the half of the kingdom it shall be performed you now will say fine the man is even here for us to kill if you kill him and already commandment had been released what do you do with the commandment that has scattered to all the nations if you just well, let's kill him and let's kill him man. rather esther promoted him man. you are going to see the promotion that esther gave him man. esther promoted him man. what how do you look at it that the wife of the president will request that president i want you to come for a feast with your interest and come along with the state governor of this state himself alone i just want to honor you i also want to honor him and you are the state governor that all the 36 states of nigeria will hear in the newspapers special presidential banquet prepared for the president and the governor of lagos is the governor of Lagos a small person? What a promotion. But that's the way to destruction. That's wisdom. It is the way, the way up is the way down. When you go up and you're coming down, you will come down very fast. That's wisdom, walking. So, now, even at the banquet. No, Haman must get double promotion. His rank must be increased twice. Esther, make your request. The Lord told Esther, don't make it yet. It's not yet ripe. There are some things I am getting them prepared. The sin of the Amorites have not yet full. The sin of Haman has not yet come to fill the cup. If the cup is not full. And besides, there's something I want to do in Mordecai's life to give a signal that I have heard your prayers. In case some people are getting discouraged, I want to give a signal. So I have not done it yet. So Esther, promote a man again. Hallelujah. Raise up that hand and just be waving at the God of heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all thy works thy hands hath made. I see the star. I hear the rolling thunder, thy 
power throughout the universe this play then sings my soul then sings my soul i say How great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul. God. Then, see it now. Haman was so joyful. Promotion the second time was coming upon Haman. Yes. Haman went again to plan for further evil. Verse 9 to 14. Haman went to plan For further evil. Chapter 5, verse 9 to 14. Then when Haman fought that day, joyful, and with a glad heart. But Queen Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate, that he stood not up, nor moved for him. He was full of indignation against Mordecai. Nevertheless, Haman refrained himself, and when he came home, he sent and called for his friends and Zerish his wife. And Haman told them of the glory of his riches and the multitude of his children who shall be hung very soon. And all the things wherein the king had promoted him and how he had advanced him above the princes and servants of the king. Haman said, Moreover, let us read it one to go. Yeah, Esther the queen did let Numa come in with the king unto the banquet that she had prepared by myself. And tomorrow I am invited unto her also with the king. That's the last busting on the earth that Hammer will make. The promotion of fools shall destroy them. The prosperity of fools shall destroy them. Fools because they think it is of their own glory. Fools because they don't know what is behind that promotion. Why God allowed it. They don't know the damage. Why did God allow it? They're not aware. That's why they're fools. If they were wise, they would rather be thanking God and giving him glory. They would be celebrating. Everybody come and join me. Praise God. See the mercy. Because all the goodness of the Lord come to you by mercy. If the Lord would deal with you the way you are, the way you have been, you would have never have it. But of mercy... He gave me this position. Of mercy, he gave me this rank, this throne. Of mercy. But fools say, my power. Nebuchadnezzar said so. My power and my might has built this kingdom. A voice descended from heaven. No, Nebuchadnezzar. You didn't build it by your power and might. But according to my program for this nation. And because you are thinking that I am as I am, I will not give my glory to another. For now you will be an animal in the bush and eat grass for seven years 
until you come to understand that the most high rules over the kingdom of men. So, Hema, I am. Ah, that's the last word. It's like saying, Heman, say your last word before you will leave this world. That's why he is saying his last words. So let everybody learn this lesson. And repent of foolishness and pride. Amen? Amen. Then, when he busted this, verse 13, he said, Yet all this availed me nothing so long as I see Mordecai the Jew sitting at the king's gate. I, I want to kill him. I want to kill him. I want to do another wickedness. Ah. Mordecai shall not die, but you will die. To show that you have no power to kill Mordecai. Except God had planned that Mordecai should die by you. Then said Zeresh his wife, and all his friends unto him, let a gallows be made of 50 cubits high. And tomorrow speak thou unto the king that Mordecai may be hanged thereon. Then go thou in merrily with the king unto the banquet. And the thing pleased Haman. And he caused the gallows to be made. You know, there are some wicked advisors that are promoting wickedness in the president, wickedness in the king, wickedness in the ruler. And the ruler thinks that, hey, they're celebrating him. They're promoting his dead. Wicked evil. If he knew which type of wife this Zeresh was, and those friends, he would have said, demons from hell. But he didn't know them. He shall know them over there in hell. That he left some demons on earth and entered hell before them. Then, what again? Yes. And the Bible tells us, in chapter 6, from verse 1, the humiliation of Haman and the promotion of Mordecai, the child of God. Promotion is coming. God will wipe away the tears of Christians in this country. Amen. The humiliation you have suffered shall turn over to the other side. Amen. Now, it goes. Chapter 6, verse 1 to 14. On that night could not the king sleep, and he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles. And they were read before the king. And it was found written that Mordecai had told of Bictana and Teresh, two of the king's chamberlains, the keepers of the door, who sought to lay hand on the king Ahasuerus. And the king said, What honor and dignity had been done to Mordecai for this? Then said the king's servants, that ministered unto him. There's nothing done for him. What a lesson. Do your goodness even in the secret. Don't force it to come out. It will come out in the right time. For your promotion. If you force it to come out. Your canal. You may even be judged for it. Cast your bread in water. It sinks into the water. But after it has drunk enough water. It will come to the top. You cast your bread in water. And you will find it after many days. Do your good in the secret. It will appear later. That was the case of Mordecai. And it appeared at the right time. God brought it at the right time. But I did all this. I did all this. Nothing happened. They didn't even recognize me. A day of recognition will come. And that day will give you double promotion. Not only will you be recognized. But something special will happen to your life. For it. So be patient in life. Amen? Amen? Yes. And the king said, Who is in the court? 
Maybe he has some footsteps. Somebody moving there. Remember, they told Haman, come and meet the king early in the morning and tell him that you want to harm Mordecai so that you will eat the food this evening very well. If king could give you a whole nation, a whole tribe to destroy, what is one man out of the tribe? He's already among the condemned. So he came to get at the king. But that night, while they were advising him, the Holy Spirit was walking in the heart of King Ahasuerus. Something moved him to take his book, a book of record. And he was just opening it. He was just opening it. Mordecai. Okay, okay, okay. Mordecai saved the life of the king by reporting this person who wanted to kill the king. Hey! And I, ah! I didn't remember. Hey, what has been done to this man? Come, come. Did you remember that there was anything done to this man? No, nothing has been done, King. No, 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 I won't be a wicked man like that. I would have not been alive if that Mordecai, just a gate man, I would I, the guy, that gate man is an oh, honorable man. He must be honored. Okay. I'm hearing footsteps there. Who oh, is at the corridor, the courtyard? They told him it was Haman. Mm-hmm. You came at the right time. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Everybody says, hey man came at the right time. The evil man came at the right time. Amen. And the king said, who is in the court? Now Haman was come into the, the outward court of the king's house to speak unto the king to hang Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared for him. And the king's servant said unto him, Behold, Haman standeth in the court. And the king said, Let him come in. So Haman came in. Who spoke first? Because the king called him first. So the king will speak first. Haman came in. And the king said unto him, What shall be done unto the man whom the king delighted to honor? Now Haman thought in his heart, to whom would the king delight to honor more than to myself? Selfish man. Set people crying morning while you sit down to eat and be making merry. Planning another one. That you will kill a man while you'll be eating merry. The Lord will punish you. Amen. The evil you're planning against your brother. God will punish you. Amen. You want to put a family into trouble so that you can be eating. God will punish you. God is not a respecter of person. Judgment must begin in the house of God. If in the church of Christ, we have people, ministers, denominations that want to suppress others, God will punish them. Amen. Hallelujah. So, how man taught it all? Who again more than myself? Then, since it will be himself, all imaginable beauty, imaginable glory, imaginable majesty, the type that will give already a great man greater glory in the great kingdom is the one he prescribed. You see how God can use your enemies to bless you? What he thinks is preparing for himself is actually preparing for you. So, it goes. Let the royal apparel be brought which the king used to wear to make him look like the king himself. And the horse that the kings ride upon and the crown royal which he said upon his head. And laid this apparel and, and horse be delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble princes. He was thinking of one. That they may array the man with her, whom the king delighted to honor. And bring him on horseback through the street of the city and proclaimed before him. Everybody, everybody here, thus 
shall it be done to the man whom the king delighted to honor everybody this is what if a, if a king delights to honor you he will dress you like himself he will make you look king like himself look at him now everybody bow the knee bow the knee that man coming is like king himself he's like the king himself coming give a clap of faith to jesus amen hi the greatest glory is because he already had money he would have added money to it but he had money he saw you know he was a rich man but don't worry more the case had money also so god didn't bring money into this matter let's reverse 10 together one two go then the king said to Haman, make haste and take the apparel and the horse as thou hast said and do even so to Mordecai the Jew that seated at the king's gate let nothing fail of all that thou hast spoken I will send supervisors after you to ensure that everything you have said you have done it <laughs> hallelujah whether he was laughing by, by the grace of god he won't be crying before the king because if he cried trouble will come to him so then took him on the apparel and the horse and i read mordecai and brought him on horseback through the street of the city and proclaimed before him thus shall it be done unto the man whom the king delighted to honor and mordecai came again to the king's gate but that is a sign that you will soon be leaving the king's gate you will be going to kingship and Mordecai came to the king's gate but he man hasted to his house mourning and having his head covered the people you have caused to mourn they shall cause you to mourn humble yourself humble yourself yes and he must say to Zeresh his wife and all his friends everything that had befallen him <laughs> it befell him then said his wise men and Zeresh his wife unto him if Mordecai be of the seed of the Jews before whom thou hast begun to fall thou shalt not prevail against him but shall utterly fall before him these people have turned to prophets all of them the spirit of prophecy entered into these magicians these evil people and they begin to prophesy prophecy of doom adding trouble to trouble hey man eh, Mordecai is a Jew you didn't tell us so you know the history of the jews you didn't hear right from the beginning from abraham from isaac from jacob come to moses what moses did in the wilderness come to the period of samuel king david solomon and all the kings you are not hearing so mordecai was a jew uh, your honor has finished the matter has finished for you that dead will not walk on Mordecai again, but you will perish. Are we, are we Jews by faith? We are children of Abraham by faith. Whoever thinks he's plotting dead over us is over himself. The Christians in this country are children of God, they are chosen whoever whatever is his name that is plotting is over himself and his people that's the world that's the world and you take heart the lord says we should not fear he says we should not worry 
He said we should trust him. Jesus says all shall be. I say the Lord says I should tell you Nigeria. Never, never worry. Said you should trust him. Jesus says all shall be well. Amen. Amen. That is how it went. Then, while this morning was continuing, verse 14, while they were yet talking with him, came the king's chamberlains and hasted to bring Haman unto the banquet that Esther had prepared. Come, was Haman really promoted? <laughs> Will you really say Haman was going for the next promotion? You know, the wisdom of God is great. The first time Haman came, the joy, the excitement, how he was fondling around the king as the king's best man. If Esther had said something over him, the king would have pitied him. But what about the second time? He will be going, the body will be shaking like this. I don't know what he's waiting for me now. I don't know what. I've tempered with the Jews. I've tempered with the Jews. I'm planning evil against Jews now. Oh, oh. What is that? In this way, are you going for fasting? He pissed him. And he sat there, his leg was doing like this. <laughs> Praise the Lord! I say praise the Lord. <laughs> Was he talking in that place? Was he laughing in that place? He, his son would be like this. Ah, hey man, what's up? Oh, oh, it's a, it was a <laughs> so the king said something is wrong with this man. It was clear and strike well the eye on his heart. That was the moment to strike. Let God lead you. Who are the people who are saying God is a fool? Who are the people who are saying God offended them? Who are the people who are saying God didn't answer prayers? The wisdom of God. My way is higher than your way. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways from you and my thoughts far from your thoughts. So, Haman came into Esther's banquet. Now, all those people who have been abusing Esther, look at this man, woman. We say, you should go and plan that they should kill this man. And now you went to promote him. Look at you, idiot, foolish, stubborn woman. Go with, deal with you. It's because you don't know the wisdom of God. Who is directing Esther on the way solution will come. This country shall have solution. Solution will come to your problems. Amen. So, the time now is ripe for the judgment of Haman. Judgment after promotion. Look at it. Chapter 7, verse 1 to 10. So the king and Haman came to banquet with Esther, the queen. And the king said again unto Esther, on the second day at the banquet of wine, what is thy petition, queen Esther? And it shall be granted thee. And what is thy request? And it shall be performed even to the half of the kingdom. Then Esther, the queen, answered and said, if I have found favor in thy sight, O king, and if it please the king, let my life be given me at my petition, and my people at my request. For we are sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be slain, and to perish. But if we had been sold for born men and born women, I, I had held my tongue 
although the enemy could not countervail the king's damage. Then the king Ahasuerus answered and said unto, queen, unto Esther the queen, Who is he? Uh, where is he? That does presume in his heart to do so. You know, when things are too shocking, you can't speak it, you speak as if you're stammering now. Hey? Listen to the request of Esther. King, actually the thing troubling my heart is, I have been sold to be destroyed. I, your special wife, whom you chose to make queen, shame is coming upon you. Because a man, is it really my enemy or your enemy king, has chosen that your wife should be destroyed. Not only me, but myself and all my people should be destroyed upon a day. Well, if he had said we should all be slaves, I wouldn't have bothered. That they would take us for slavery. I wouldn't have bothered. I would have still kept quiet. But even that, to make intelligent people like these slaves, second hand, the damage would have been still great to the king. But he has said we should be slain. One day. The king said, eh, who? Who? Because who again in this kingdom more than the king, King Ahasuerus, that can come to be killing his wife, the wife of the king, chosen one, that the king lost presenting his wife before the whole world. He will gather great crowd and present his wife. See how beautiful my wife is. And this beautiful woman, they will kill her. Who? Who again in this nation, in this country, um, or in this my kingdom? Who? Who? who where is he? From where? With surprise. Uh, the knee of him and that was just beating like this, but started beating like this. <laughs> God will reduce any man. God will break down the stubborn man. God will reduce them and bring them to nothing. They are breathing because he gives them breath. Do they speak as if they are gods? Satan who gave them power. Is that? Satan knows God and trembles at God. Do you then you who receive power from Satan will come and challenge God? Challenge the people of God? Don't do that. You won't last there. Herod did it and was stricken down and wombs ate him up. Don't try it. Humble yourself and respect the name of Jesus. Yes. Esther continued. And Esther said, the adversary and enemy double title. Double banquet, double title. The, the banquet, the two banquets was done for adversary. The first one was for adversary. The second one was for enemy. <laughs> to get both wiped out. The adversary an enemy is this wicked Haman. Then Haman was afraid before the king and the queen. <laughs> He became lunatic. Now, the thing so shocked the king that maybe the king had high blood pressure. If he sat down there, he would fall. So he stood up and went to the garden. Otherwise, <laughs> the thing was breaking in. Eh? 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 So, uh, eh? You saw... Praise the Lord. Uh -uh. And the king, arising from the banquet of wine in his wrath, went into the palace garden, and Haman stood up to make request for his life to Esther the queen, for he saw that there was evil determined against him by the king. Then the king returned out of the palace garden into the place of the banquet of wine and Haman was falling upon the bed wherein Esther was 
Then said the king, Will he force the queen also before me in the house? Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> the king had never seen this type of wickedness. He never knew that this man called Hammer was a devil directly with him. Eh? You want to kill my wife. Now she is good for you to sleep with that you fall into it because he has fallen on Esther. Help me. I was holding the lake of Esther. You want to open the lake of my wife? Eh! <laughs> Immediately the king shouted. It's as if the king was shouting for help. <laughs> All the, the chamberlains, the soldiers, the security men that was there, rush at him and drag him. Drag him on. Yes. Then one of them said, the God law that he made for Mordecai to hang him is in his house. Hang him there! Hmm. As the word went out of the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. And Habona, one of the chamberlains, said before the king, Behold also the gallows fifty cubits high, which Haman hath made for Mordecai, who spoke good for the king, standeth in the house of Haman. Then the king said, Hang him there on. So they hung Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai, then was the king's wrath pacified. In fact, as they were hanging him, it's like they were pouring cool water upon the heart of the king. His provocation came from God. It was God that was provoked. Don't bother, go and answer your enemy. I, I was told that a, one of these Muslim governors, a contestant said, if I don't win, I will become a Christian. To him, he's talking. He's not talking to man. He's talking to God who made him. So the matter is not our own. Let no Christian bother about him. He is talking and challenging Jesus. The Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Jesus will answer him. Yeah. It's not for us. Let's live our normal life. Let them say and laugh. The bitterness will follow after. I'm telling you, don't have problem. This country is your own. You are not second class. All the seats of authority that you lost will come back. Amen. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. You know, when Haman was planning his wickedness, he was doing it openly, speaking it out openly. Can you see how many people knew that he had met a gallo? Can you see how they all knew that it was for Mordecai? It's likely Mordecai had even heard. That's why don't bother about what they are saying. God will treat that matter. All their promises, all their plans, that they even make it in the open, say it in the open. A man had set his own in the open, had carried out his plan in the open, but he ended on his life. That is it. Everybody say, Amen. Amen. Banquet finished. Answer has come. The, the cloud has been cleared. A new regime now will resume. How was it? Look at it, chapter 8. From verse 1. Chapter 8. Verse 1 and 2. On that day did the king Ahasuerus give the house of Haman, the Jews, the Jews' enemies, unto Esther the queen. And Mordecai came before the king, for Esther had told what he was unto her. And the king took off his ring, which he had taken from Haman, and gave it unto Mordecai. 
And Esther set Mordecai over the house of Haman. Keep, just be clapping hands. Don't stop until I say so. Be worshipping God with a clap of faith. The matter has finished. Okay, you can stop now. You can stop. Mordecai went on a hard course and passed the exam. And now see the promotion he has gotten. And how long had this thing lasted? That Mordecai now has become number two in the kingdom. How long has it lasted? There are some sufferings. There are some challenges that God allows to come on your way. If you can manage them, those things in righteousness, the promotion will come sharply. Thank you, Jesus. That's the word of God. Yes. The way God works. In verse 15 to 17 of chapter 8. Verse 15 to 17. And Mordecai went from the presence of the king in royal apparel. I told you the other one they gave him was to tell him, Mordecai, see, this is just a touch. It's just like when you're watching a film. They give you some things inside there. They just give you, just for four tests, that things inside, test it. You will come at it. So that is what happened. The royal apparel that Haman put upon Mordecai was to say, Mordecai, get ready. Greatness is coming on your way. And see it now. And Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel of blue and white and with a great crown of gold and with a garment of fine linen and purple. And the city of Shushan rejoiced and was glad. The people that were mourning now started rejoicing. When the wicked are on throne, the people mourn. But when the righteous are on throne, the people rejoice. The Jews had light and gladness and joy and honor. And in every province and in every city, whither the king's commandment and his decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a good day. Let's read the last few words there. And many of the people of the land became Jews, for the fear of the Jews fell upon them. I told you revival is coming upon this nation. Many religious people who have other religions shall become Christians because of the power of Jesus that shall display in this nation for the last days. Hallelujah. On the mountain, in the valley, on the land, and in the sea. On the mountain, in the valley, on the land, and in the sea. Hallelujah. That is it. In chapter 9, verse 1 to 5. Now, in the twelfth month, that is the month Ada, on the thirteenth day of the same, when the king's commandment and his decree drew near to put in execution, in the day that the enemies of the Jews hoped to have power over them, although it was turned the contrary, that the Jews had rule over them that hated them. Don't fear anybody hating you as long as you're on the side of God. Don't fear any battle that they say they will set up against you. You will win in that battle. Amen. Any battle that is set upon the Christians in this nation, Christians will win. Amen. Because they are serving the winning Lord. Angels will come and fight. And who can stand the angels? Who can stand before the angels? A missionary went to preach the gospel somewhere. I think it was part of Nigeria. We call it either the Koma Hill or so. In Adamawa State. Something happened. That 
as they were preaching the people because converting the people to jesus the indigents of the place wanted to fight them so they came in number to far as they were coming to fight what can the missionaries do then to say oh jesus take care jesus handle our life where we are in your hands as the people were advancing with their weapons suddenly he saw them turn their back with great running they were running, running to escape for their life they fall throw away their weapons right <laughs> ah, what's happening you were coming to fight us we're not even holding weapons what is happening to you it is was later they got one of them they say oh you are not seeing him you are not seeing him a tall man that reaches the heavens he carried a whip everybody took a big rest that's why we escaped praise the lord that is when he chooses to use whip what if he uses a sword so don't i say you will win so fear not i say what but don't cause trouble too because god does not want troublemakers but if somebody will look for your trouble call on god call upon me in the day of trouble I will deliver you and you will glorify my name. Amen? Amen? That's what the word of God is saying. God will promote his people. Verse 2. The Jews gathered themselves together in their cities throughout all the provinces of King Ahasuerus to lay hand on such as sought their heart and no man could withstand them. For the fear of them fell upon all people. And all, let's read verse 3 together. One, two, go. And all the rulers of the provinces, and the lieutenants, and the deputies, and officers of the king helped the Jews because the fear of Mordecai fell upon them. Number four, for Mordecai was great in the king's house and his fame went out throughout all the provinces for this man Mordecai waxed greater and greater and verse 5 does the Jews smote all their enemies with a stroke of the sword and slaughter and destruction and did what they would unto those that hated them amen the Lord will do it and then chapter 10 verse 3 chapter 10 verse 3 for Mordecai the Jew was next unto King Ahasuerus and great among the Jews and accepted of the multitude of his brethren seeking the world of his people and speaking peace to all his seed that is the end now to conclude we want to read second chronicles chapter 7 verse 13 and 14 Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from the wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Isaiah chapter 58, and read verse 1 to verse 3. Verse 1 to verse 4. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily. And delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, 
and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast, ye find pleasure, and exert all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with a feast of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice to be hard on high. Verse 5, is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush, and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house, when thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thy soul from thine own flesh? Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be your real reward. The Lord has said, sin is the reason why he allows his people to suffer. And some of you who are crying and saying, God didn't hear our prayer. God is not faithful. God, are you really Christians? Are you born again? Are you a child of God? Are you not drunkards? Are you not thieves, witches and wizards? Are you not oppressors, thieves? Doing every wicked thing. And you think that it is you God should hear your prayer. And you are the one coming to blame God. And hey, God didn't hear our prayer. We have been praying for this nation. Are you the one to say that? And hey, we fasted. Which type of fast? Fast and go and take alcohol. Fast and go and sleep with woman. Fast and go and sleep with a man. Is that the fast I have chosen? Go and fast in the correct way. Repent of your life. You have no right to question God. You have not done your righteousness. Repent. And then call on God. And see whether God will not move for you. We who have called on God, we are righteous. And that is why we believe that he has answered our prayers. And we shall see it done. It shall come to pass. Whatever we see now. Elijah told his servant, go, look up to the sky. I am praying now. And tell me the report you see. He said, I didn't see anything in the sky. Elijah continued praying. We continue our prayer. And see, they look again. I didn't see so. Keep on looking. Answer will come to our request. And then the seventh time he said, I see a cloud in the sky like a man's son. The answer has come. Go and tell Ahab. There will be mighty rain now. And very soon the heavens were covered with thick cloud. And there was great downpour. Our God will do great downpour of, of righteousness and victory over Nigeria. And his children shall praise his name. Rise up. Oh, that man would praise the Lord. Amen. I say for his goodness and for his wonderful work to the children of me, to the children, for he has broken the gate of us and cut the bars of iron in sandal. He has broken the gate of us and cut the bars of iron in Oh yes. Oh He has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron asunder. Oh, that man will praise the Lord for his goodness 
and wonderful works. Oh, that men would praise the Lord. Oh, that men would praise the Lord. For his goodness and for his wonderful works. To the children of men, to the children of men. For his goodness and for his wonderful works. To the children of men, to the children of men. Oh, he has broken the gate of us and cut the bars of iron in sandal. He has broken the gate of us and cut the bars of iron in sandal. Amen. Amen. Oh yes, oh that men would praise the Lord. Oh yes, oh that men would praise the Lord. For his goodness and for his wonderful works. To the children of men, to the children of men. For his goodness and for his wonderful works. To Nigerians, to Nigerians. He has broken the gate of us and cut the bars of iron in sunder. He has broken the gate of us and cut the bars of iron in Sing again. voice and pray your God is with you he is in Nigeria it is his headquarters now for the whole world where revival will flourish revival shall move to other nations of the world the devil is challenging God in Nigeria he shall not walk the devil knows he's a failure Jesus is Lord over Nigeria and other nations. Jesus is Lord. Over Nigeria and the nations of the world. Rejoice! You will face tomorrow. The Lord says you should not fear. He said you should not worry. He said you should trust him. And that all shall be well. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials for other spiritual materials messages or inquiries contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4444 
0302-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, holinessrevivalmovement at gmail.com. God bless you.